Let's talk about Signet Jewelers. The company's shares soared following the publication of its second quarter earnings report last week. The market responded positively even though revenue fell 7.6% to $1.5 billion, while the company posted a net loss of $98.5 million compared to a $75 million profit the previous year. The declines were largely expected, so the shares movement reflected several positive talking points that management emphasized. The first being that they expect to comfortably meet their guidance for the full year. That raises the possibility of a best case scenario in which the company could beat guidance. Importantly, the declines softened. Same store sales fell 3.4% during the quarter compared to a drop of 8.9% in Q1, a 9.6% decline in the fourth quarter of last year, and an 11.8% drop in the previous period. The company said its same store sales have turned positive in the current third quarter, which runs through to the end of October. Signet has given guidance for third quarter same store sales to be within a range of a 1% decline and a 1.5% increase. It seems to be tending toward the a better case scenario. Other positive talking points were that margins improved as did its average transaction value or ATV up 1.6% to $578 per transaction in North America while the number of transactions in the region fell 8.8%. Signet sold less for a little more. The fashion segment was its strongest, but Signet also said it is starting to see an improvement in engagements, which would fuel its bridal sales. The company has been betting on a spike of engagements for some time, the theory being that there was a lull in dating during COVID and that couples needed to go through the full relationship cycle before seeing an uptick in proposals again. So the recovery from COVID of the bridal segment was delayed and was delayed again. Signet announced that the engagement recovery is finally here. Is finally happening. It pointed to a rise in searches for engagement rings on Google and Instagram and that is translating to engagement units being up so far in the third quarter which stirs a bit of confidence as we head into the holiday season which is a peak period for proposals PPP. There's still some caution though due to economic uncertainty which Signet acknowledged is holding consumers back but the company left us with the expectation that the engagement and bridal segment will finally return to pre-COVID levels. That said, the fashion category is what's leading Signet's recovery with positive same-store sales reported in July, August and September which again positions the company well to keep the momentum going into the holiday season. This may surprise you that growth in the average transaction value is being driven by the fashion segment, whereas Bridal's ATV was flat in the second quarter. And what is driving growth in the fashion segment? Well, Signet pointed to product innovations such as sculpted gold that it gives a chunky look with a minimal use of the metal in this high gold price environment. And the second and probably more telling growth driver in fashion was in the sale of lab-grown diamond jewelry. And here it's worth quoting CEO Gina Drossos when she said that lab diamond fashion jewelry continues to grow up more than 25% in the quarter compared to last year and is a driver of average transaction value. That's very interesting. That It raises an interesting question. As lab-grown prices have continued to decline quite sharply, how is Signet pulling off a rise in ATV on this product? It's essentially saying it's selling lab grown at higher prices, but it's not necessarily that their prices have increased. It's all about upscaling the consumer. And I'm not sure I fully understand it, but it is easier to upsell from a one carat to a two carat piece at those lower lab grown diamond price points. It seems that's what's happening here. As a side note, I do ask, are the declines that we're seeing of lab grown prices at wholesale being reflected at retail. It's not clear from Signet's earnings that it is. And that fuels margins. Well known that lab grown is a driver of higher margins and that again encourages retailers to sell the product. And with that I still detect some tension with regard to Signet's offering of lab grown versus its recently stated emphasis on natural diamonds. We saw in the last six months or so, the company has changed its messaging, giving more cautionary statements about lab grown and somewhat pivoting back to natural diamonds. It has partnered with the Beers to promote natural diamonds during the holiday season. That will include ad campaigns and training of sales staff to effectively talk about natural diamonds. What I'd like to see is for the upsell to be from lab grown to natural. What do I mean by that? Instead of raising the average transaction value 
value by convincing a customer to buy a two carat lab grown instead of a one carat lab grown can you convince that customer to buy a one carat or even a 70 point natural diamond instead of a one carat lab grown I kind of feel that that is the big challenge of our times signet might argue that they're servicing two different sets of customers at different price points there are those that are better suited to lab grown and those that gravitate towards natural. I'm not sure about that. It sounds a little lazy. That bridal customer was exclusively natural not so long ago. Anyway, as I said, I'm still a little uneasy with regard to Signet's emphasis on lab grown. On the other hand, investors seem to have liked what they saw in the second quarter and synthetics is playing a role in that. One final element I'd like to highlight from the results is Signet's services division. The company has made several key acquisitions in the past few years when we think about James Allen and Blue Nile and Diamonds Direct, but its acquisition of SJR National Repair Center in July 2023 fell somewhat under the radar. Maybe it had a little less sex appeal than those retail banners, but it may have been a master stroke. The services and repair division that Signet is building is proving to be a real growth driver for the company, having had sales of $364 million in the first six months of the fiscal year. It is on track to be a $1 billion business in the coming years, as the company said it would. So look, these earnings reports can be a little technical, but really it's all about messaging when it comes to Signet, not only for investors who are the company's real target audience here, but also for those of us in the diamond and jewelry trade. As the largest jeweler in the United States, accounting for an estimated 10% of the market through its banners, K Jewelers, Jared, Zales, Diamonds Direct, James Allen, Blue Nile, among others. What is Signet Jewelers telling us about the state of play at this point of the year? The bottom line is that after three years or so of declines, Signet is signaling that it is returning to growth and investors responded and bought into that story. The shares, which tend to be quite volatile, were trading above $90 through the week following the results, whereas they hovered around $75 prior to the announcement. For the diamond and jewelry trade, I think we can take the results as a vote of confidence in the industry. With the caveat though, that Signet has underperformed the jewelry market in the last two years. It has a bit of catching up to do. Furthermore, we do recognize that what is good for Signet is not necessarily good for the market, even though it's a bellwether company for us. Moving forward, this upcoming fourth quarter could be a real inflection point in how retail journalists are differentiating lab grown from natural diamonds and Signet is our test case. So I'm looking out for the effectiveness of that De Beers partnership, not only whether it stimulates sales of natural diamonds, but also whether it changes Signet's approach to lab grown. The upsell has to be from lab grown to natural and not linear. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts and show me some love. Hit the like button and subscribe as if every kiss begins with K. I'm Avi Kravitz with a K. I'll see you guys next time. See you.